Our next honor will be for Representative Judy Biggert. Uh, in order to serve that award, we're going to ask Joanne Boffman, who's currently Executive Vice President of the American Society of Human Genetics, to come. And keeping true with our story, uh, Joe, when this all started, was the provost of the University of Maryland. Joe. What a journey it's been. Um, I represent the scientific community and I'm trained as a scientist myself, and sometimes I thought science was hard. It's democracy that's really hard. <laughs> um, science is also collaborative in many kinds of ways. Certainly, the, um, mapping the human genome was a collaborative effort, including many, many scientists. But having climbed what some people refer to as Capitol Hill and I see as Capitol Mountain, uh, over the last 13 years. Um, what I now know is truly collaboration is when people who honestly disagree and have reason to disagree can still sit down and work through very difficult issues, find common ground, and move forward together. Scientists will continue to ask what's next, but what about showing a little bit more data? But in the policy world, you have to stop and take a vote. It may not be perfect yet, but you've got to stop and take a vote. And in this process, uh, the scientific community has also learned. Um, and it has been uh, a wonderful experience. And I think having been uh, a part of this Coalition for Genetic Fairness, uh, the scientific community, the genetics community will continue to be engaged in policy in ways that they have not ever been before. We get it now. And I think that that is very important in and of itself. One of the things that we learned uh, in this process was not only do you have to have champions on one side of the Capitol building, but you have to have them on both sides of the Capitol building. Not only do you have to have them on one side of the aisle, you have to have them on both sides of the aisle. Especially as we've moved through uh, administrations and the changing of Congresses and the movement of parties and political um, situations, it was absolutely critical to have somebody like Representative Judy Bigger from Illinois step forward and representing all of her most sincere interests in small business, in economic development, um, and being from Illinois now, representing the Midwest, now we have um, across the country represented. But Representative Biggert stepped forward and stepped out. And one of my fondest memories is actually Representative Biggert coming to a genetics conference, of all things, a genetic testing conference, and talking to us about what this bill meant from her perspective. What a learning experience that was for the scientists and the caretakers in the room. And so it is with a great deal of pleasure and a great deal of gratitude that we also tonight honor Representative Judy Brigger from Illinois. And uh, if Brian Peterson, her staffer, would come up here I will uh, complete the circle for a moment. Brian um, has been stalwart in this process, has been very patient with those of us who were not the policy wonks. Uh, and in fact, we've snagged him now. Uh, Brian is going to medical school this fall. And so we, we, welcome, you. we welcome you, Brian, on behalf of Representative Bigger, so that now you can enjoy the pleasures of having the protections for your patients as you come in and to join us uh, in, in the field of medicine. Thank you, Joanne. Um, it's a pleasure to be with everyone here tonight. Um, I'm sorry that I'm Boston to make it, but um, 
I know she's all us in spirit. Um, I just want to start off and uh, thank, of course, all of the different um, people involved in the process. I know my boss has really enjoyed working, obviously, with Mrs. Slaughter, um, as well as our Senate colleagues, Mrs. Snow, Mr. Kennedy, and uh, Mr. Enzi. So I um, just want to say thank you to all those people, and of course, to everyone else in the room, to the Jeanette Lines Board, um, to Sharon Terry in particular, of course, and all the hard work you guys have put in over the years. Um, on the issue as a little bit more of a latecomer um, to the game, it was great to be able to walk into a situation where there were experts you know, at, at, at the ready to answer questions and help us through the process. So um, hugely important, um, as well as the rest of the support, of course. Um, I know the Congress would be happy to accept this very appropriately designed award. Um, we'll be able to find a prominent place for it in our office. and. Going to remind her a lot of uh, the shared experience and the shared success um, with everyone, everyone here tonight. Um, just one thing else that I want to mention, you know, during the process of moving this bill forward over the last few years, and we've heard a, a whole lot of stories, and um, something has kind of struck out as I've been in the room when they, people have been talking about those stories over that period of time. Um, each is uniquely different, but they all seem to share a common thread. and. That is, they're all, they all share one fundamental belief that you know, we should not punish for our genes, we should not penalize for being corrected about our health or the health of our families, and that participation in clinical trials should not have consequences. So I know the Congresswoman is relieved and excited that those finally passed and that we've succeeded in delivering the protections to the American people, build freedom to embrace genetic testing technology without fear of repercussions. So thanks again and. Have a great evening.